when I was replenishing the money I blew in those accounts, I had to work a, a secondary job to get it. And it took a lot to be able to get that money back in there just to do it again. But I didn't lose hope. I was cussing and ranting and raving the whole time I had to do it, wanting to quit the extra job I was working. But I knew, unless I did this, nothing's gonna change. Nothing is gonna change unless you put your feet to the ground and say, I'm digging my heels in. I know it's gonna be hard. I know I'm gonna have pushback. I know it's gonna be requiring me to put time into it. When all my friends are out there running around and clubbing and doing this and chasing tail and doing this and doing that and drinking and having fun on the weekends, no, so I'm gonna be in these charts studying. I'm gonna be living my life differently, but they're still gonna be out there trying to chase tail, broke as fuck, driving a beater fucking car, and ain't doing shit in their life and you'll be able to pull down annual fucking salaries on a week. You can't even imagine where you're gonna be. You can't even imagine it. Whatever you think, whatever you think is your level of success, it's not big enough. It's not big enough. You have no idea when you strip all these limitations that you put on yourself, you shackle yourself with your own mindset. You do it. This is all I can see myself doing right now when you start making a hundred thousand dollars a year you start thinking to yourself oh shit that wasn't all that hard i thought it was really hard well now i'm going to aim for five hundred thousand dollars and the attempts that you do to do that you get there in less than half the time and you start thinking well shit they say the first million dollars is the hardest one i'm about there boom in a couple more months and then you're there and you look back and say a million dollars isn't all that much money and yeah it took some effort but it didn't take as much effort as i thought it was going to take and then you start making 5 million, 10 million, 15 million, 50 million. And I know I'm talking in numbers none of you can fucking comprehend, but it is what it is, folks. It's just math. It's just math. You're compounding the efforts of what you're able to do on the smallest form. And watch it. That's teaching you patience. You don't have that. When you first start, you don't have patience because you're trying to chase the lead dog. Whether it be me, somebody else that's saying they're making money, someone else is doing something on a live stream, someone else is doing signal service, someone else is doing whatever. You're constantly trying to run. When it's better for you in the beginning to learn to sit still, observe. How are you thinking about the marketplace? Do you feel like this you know, insatiable desire that you got to be in there today? Like, come hell or high water, even if you only get five handles of the, the 30 handle run, if you just get a piece of it, you know, at least you got something. You took a you took a bite of the uh, you know the, the the beast that you've been hunting. That's a hyena's approach. You know, I I, I don't I don't trade like a hyena. I'm not out there cackling and, and you know, making crazy noises and shit, trying to just get a snap a bite of something. I'm out there, literally, stalking and waiting. And when I see the weak one in the herd, the Judas swing, to see the retail traders thinking that they got something that's easy money for them. If that's 100% diametrically opposed to what I'm anticipating in price, I'm running that fucker then. And I'm going home with a full day. And I'm not second guessing it. I'm not worrying about what other people are doing, what they think's making the market go up or down, what the volume profile said, what volume node they're looking at, what point of control, what VWAP, what fucking supply and demand zone, what Elliott wave count is. I don't give a fuck about none of that stuff. I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm not worried about anything else. I'm dialed in. I know exactly what I'm hunting. I got my eyes set on it and I'm going to run it down. And I'm taking it home. That's not arrogance. That's not narcissism. That's absolutely defined as confidence because I've been here enough times to know that what I'm doing works. I don't need to change it. I don't need to look at somebody else to help me make it better. I'm not looking at any retail logic because it's not even in there. I'm attacking that. I am an apex predator. It's attacking the weakest form of trader in this industry at a time when they're making their actions known. Because whatever you can do with the least, if you have a measurable outcome that is more times than not delivered to you, 
based on a model that you're working with. When you do that same procedure over and over again, just like a cookie cutter, you take it and you press it into the dough. Are you expecting a, sh a star shaped cookie dough cutter to give you a shape of a circle or a square? No, it's designed to do one thing. You press it into the dough, you lift it up. There you have a piece of dough that's cut out in the form of a star. Wonderful. Are you trying to do something else outside of that? No. Your job is to find another place where you can find the dough, which is a trade setup, and you're going to press your cookie cutter, which is your mold, or your model rather, press it into that dough, and pull it out. And you take home that star shaped or whatever the shape of that cookie cutter is, whatever your model is, if it's the optimal trade entry, if it's the silver bullet, if it's, you know, anything else. That's all you're there to do. And demanding it does anything more than that is foolishness. The results that you get from the least amount of leverage from that is irrelevant in the beginning because you have to get to the point where you can replicate that over and over and over again, more times than not over the course of a month, over the course of a week. And taking that sample set and saying, okay, I have done this for a week and this is the many transactions I've taken. This is how many that were profitable. This is how many times that were not profitable. This is how much I was able to yield as a net return. Over time, it'll become easier to do it. That's the goal. And you want it to be boring. You know, you know, on Wednesday morning of next week, you're going to go out there and you're going to find 10 handles in S&P. You know you're going to find 30 handles in the NASDAQ. I know that. I absolutely fucking know I'm going to do that. I know I'm going to be able to do that. I can do that. I know tonight when I lay my head down that my, my thought is not going to be swirling around. Am I going to be able to trade next week? Am I going to be able to pull anything off? Am I going to be able to find a setup? Uh, it's a given. It's absolutely given. I'm not worried about that. That is confidence that you cannot depreciate until you have it. And most traders don't have it. Even if they are profitable, they're, they, they still say that the market's random. It, it is random if you're believing the bullshit you're trying to trade off of. All these things that you're subscribing to as a religion. Elliott Wave, Wyckoff, it's this, it's Jump in the Creek, it's this, uh, you know, this wave count. Man, if I had a trade like that, I, I would not be able to sleep at night. That's too many variables. Too many variables where I'm trading on constants. I know where the liquidity is. I know where the inefficiencies are. I know what the economic counter is going to produce a injection of volatility at a specific date and time. I'm not, I'm not clueless. I'm not confused. I know exactly when I'm going to step my ass in there and tap dance all over this shit and moonwalk my ass out the door with a bounty. I'm going to do that anytime I fucking want. And when you learn how to do it, you'll do the same thing. It's confidence that you cannot appreciate until you have it. In the hands of weaker men and ladies, you'll be a prick like I was on American Line when I finally got it. I was an asshole. You think I'm an asshole now? No, I was bragging. I was really bragging all the time. I'm just spitting facts right now and I'm bringing receipts every single day. But you don't want to accept it because you can't do it yet. And you think it should have happened to you because you watched a few videos or you scribble some bullshit on a, on a notepad or a napkin at work and you think that you've been journaling. That's not that's not a real attempt at doing it. You're half-assing it. And if you're half-assing it, don't be surprised when you get half-assed results. When you make it your business, that this is your career, you are learning how to operate and, and run a business. What is it? You incorporated. You incorporated. These people will try to tear you down all the time. And the more success you have, the more success that you share, there are more of them going to come at you. Are you going to live your life worrying about what they're going to say about you? Fuck these people. They are losers. The fact that they're spending their time talking about you, they're fucking showing you they're losers. Nobody that has success spends any time talking about somebody else. <laughs> Nobody does. Nobody has time talking about that shit. You keep your business minded by you. You mind your own business. Nobody else is going to mind it. You do it. And you stay out of everybody else's business. You keep your head in the charts. You keep building, understanding yourself, 
where you make mistakes, where do you fear, what do you get anxious about, what do you get too um, overzealous about prematurely or overconfident because there's a real thing like that. Identify those things. They're going to help you prune that tree, that money tree that you, you're growing into a money tree. I'm a, I'm a money making dynamo. I can walk out these fucking doors. I could lose everything. I could literally lose every fucking thing. And I could start with zero money in my fucking pocket. And in 12 months, be a multimillionaire again. Do you feel that confident about yourself? Because everything I talked about in this presentation today, it all leans on having one skill set. And that's hard. It's real hard if you don't know what you're doing and you're brand new, you have no experience, you've never been here before. Every little tiny fluctuation, one tick against your entry feels like the beginning of a run on your stock. And that's not what it's like when you're thinking like I'm teaching you. I trust my model. If it goes to my stop, I place my stop incorrectly, and I'm okay with that. I know the likelihood of my next trade is going to be just as well as the one I just entered. It's not diminishing. The efficacy of my models are not diminishing. They're constant. Your appreciation for those models and approaches are on the upslope. You're at the beginning of your journey, and I envy all of you. I envy all of you. I miss those moments of astonishment where I would see something and I'm like, okay, this is what it should do. And let's see what happens. And it delivers perfectly to the tick. And then you're looking around the room like, am I supposed to know this? Like you're expecting the black suits to show up in front of your house. A helicopter's landing in your backyard like you're coming with us, you know? <laughs> those moments of astonishment are amazing. Those epiphanies, those, those moments where the veil is lifted and you see the market as it really is in binary form. You know, when Neo finally understands who he is and where he's at, he doesn't see the people in front of him throwing punches. It's just zeros and ones. And all he has to do is, this is what his response is going to be. And he knows what they're going to do before they do it. That's a macro. The, the idea is, in closing, you need to guard your mind. You need to do the very least in the beginning. Because if you can't get experience or growth or progress measured in any capacity with the least amount of exposure to risk, it matters not how much more risk you can accumulate. What's the difference is, is if you have 15 contracts on or if you have one micro lot on, if you're wrong about what you're trying to do in the marketplace, the market's going to show you. Do you need the maximum pain, the mass, the maximum expense, the maximum discomfort for you to appreciate that you're not following the model correctly? Because some of you, you're full of shit when you say, I got to learn how to trade with real money. That's the only way I can learn how to trade. No, no, no. What you're doing is you're saying that I'm a fucking idiot. Please beat me over the head with a stupid stick because I don't know enough to know that I can do this without any harm to myself, without any financial risk, without any kind of hardships that's going to cause me to second guess my own ability because of the fear of being wrong associated with money. That's the reality. Books aren't going to teach you that way. Mentors aren't going to teach you that way. It's sugar free. As it should be. You want it to taste sweet like honey. And sugar is a disease causer. The more you can cut sugar out of your diet, the best you're going to have in terms of health. The same way with trading. You want meat and potatoes, baby. Meat and fucking potatoes. That's it.